Hello, and welcome to Legislative Report. I'm State Representative Kurt Mosser. We're highlighting some of the businesses or attractions we have in the 107th District that are unique for us. Today, I am so happy to showcase what I think is the gem of our district, uh, the Montour Preserve. And with us today is Bob Stout, and you are sort of overseer of, of this uh, preserve right now. So yes, welcome, Bob, and thank you, sir. thank you for having us out here to uh, show us around the preserve. Uh, right now, we're standing in the Welcome Center. Um, the Welcome Center is a, a, is a, I could stay in here for hours and learn about the different <laughs> birds and the different animals and uh, the environment. Uh, but talk to us a little bit about Montour Preserve as a whole. Sure and also what you'll find here in the Welcome Center. Sure, thank you. Uh, again, my name is Bob Stout. I'm the director of the Montour Recreation Commission. Here at the Montour Preserve, we have 650 acres, including the 160-acre Lake Chilisquaki. So we have roughly 10 miles of hiking trails. We have the fossil pit, the sugar shack, wildlife observation blinds, a uh, total of seven pavilions, uh, and then again, the, the visitor center and the environmental education center. Here in the Visitor Center, which is open Monday through Saturday from eight till four, you've got educational displays, we've got taxidermied wildlife exhibits, we've got uh, bird watching out the back window, uh, we've got taxidermied mounts of fish and other wildlife, there's architectural or and uh, archeological displays here behind us. There's a little bit of everything in here. It really appeals to school groups, to young kids, but to people of all ages. Sure is. The, the preserve was established by PPL. Correct. Uh, because they needed an alternative uh, source of water, so they had to build the lake, and around it, they preserved the land, which was certainly a benefit to our region. And for years and years, it was under PPL control. Uh, as we know, PPL sold the, the power plant, the new owners weren't in the preserve business, and um, we were at risk of losing this wonderful gem. To the rescue comes <laughs> Montour Area Recreation Commission. That's my words. Thank you. Uh, but uh, that's how it happened. That's how Mark got involved with uh, the, the, yes. the preserve. Um, so you're on ongoing fundraising effort. We'll talk about that a little bit later on. But um, So it does take some money to keep something like this going. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're so thankful that Mark stepped up. Uh, so a little later on, we're going to go up and we're going to look at the lake. We're going to look at the sugar shack. We're going to look at the fossil pit. Uh, there's just so much to see. Trying to condense it into a half hour program yeah. could be tough, but we're going we're gonna to give it a try. Very good. From here, we're going to go on to the Sugar Shack. Very good. Bob, now we're at the Sugar Shack. And uh, what I think is a really unique uh, part of this Montour Preserve. Uh, tell us a little bit about the, the Sugar Shack, uh, when it's used, uh, who's using it, and what the, what the people learn out when they come out here. So the Montour Preserve Sugar Shack has been in here for as long as anybody locally can remember. To be honest, I went to Warrior Run High School, which is just over in Northumberland County. When I was a kid, we came out to the Sugar Shack. And uh, many of the people that I've grown up with who, who live here remember the Sugar Shack, they have fond memories. Really, it is late February through early March, typically at the right time of the year when you have warm days, cold evenings, where it gets the sap flowing through the maple trees here. We're in a grove of maple trees here on both sides of us. And what we do is we'll tap the maple trees here around us. And then here in the sugar shack, which is behind us, we have all the hardware that we need to boil down the maple sap and turn it into maple sugar. So in late February and early March, typically the last Saturday of February and the first Sunday of March, if I remember correctly, we'll have open house programs here where they'll see a movie and a short presentation over in the visitor center. And then the groups will walk out here to the sugar shack. They'll see the living history demonstrations. They'll get a chance to taste the maple sugar and, and see how it's all done. And then again, in late February and early March, we'll have a number of school groups who will schedule programs with John Beam or some of our other volunteers. The school groups will come out, and again, they'll see those same programs. They'll learn how maple sugar has been made for hundreds of years. Really neat. So they can see the, tea, the trees that are tapped, see yep. the, the syrup coming, the sap coming out of the trees. Um, we have trails going, through, going throughout. You can come from the visitor center, walk down a trail, and come right to this beautiful, beautiful spot. Yes. That's a, that's a really unique, unique feature. Um, and who does the programs on the, on the sugaring, uh, I think? It's John Beam, who's our assistant director. John had been the naturalist when it was still PPL. 
So John has literally a lifetime of experience doing natural history programs like this. We have some other great local volunteers. Ken Mertz is a local resident. He used to be one of my teachers actually. We're on Deb Steransky and a number of others will come out here and they'll donate their time. Uh, they love what they're doing. They love teaching the kids. And so again, it's either Montour Rec staff or it's volunteers who put on the programs. It's a great, great, unique opportunity for school groups and the public at large on those two Saturdays, late February, early March, to come out and learn about uh, just going back in time. And, uh, so thank you. I think we're, from here, we're going to head up to the lake yes. and see what's going on up there. Very good. Now we're at Lake Chillisquaki. Yes. What does Chillisquaki mean? Native American term meaning the song of the goose or the call of the goose, as we've been told. Great. Uh, what a beautiful setting. It is. Uh, the, 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 the lake is how big? 165 acres is the lake proper. Again, the whole Montour Preserve as it's defined is 650 acres. So this really is the keystone gem in the center of the Montour Preserve. The Lake Chillisquaki is open to boating, to fishing, uh, to, to recreation in general. No gasoline engines can be used on the lake. Uh, it's trolling motors or, or hand powered only. Uh, it's real popular, it's a warm water fishery. So you've got bass, you've got pike, You've got a great population of walleye in this lake, as it turns out. The Fish and Boat Commission did a survey earlier this year. Uh, it's popular with families who will come out by the shorelines either in the evening. They'll fish for catfish and carp from the shores. Uh, kids love to fish for panfish from along the shorelines. On the far side of the lake, which would be the Heron Cove side, the boat launch is over there. There's also a fishing pier, so that's also popular with families who like to come out and they'll sit and they'll do some fishing. But and you you, would, you don't need a fishing game launch permit here because it's a private that's lake, correct. right? So that's they wouldn't they wouldn't need their license. Nope. As long as it's a, a, a they don't need a uh, a launch permit for their vessel. They do still need a fishing license to fish here at the lake if they're over 16, I believe it is. So you need a fishing license, but you do not, not need a launch lake. permit, right, for your watercraft. So any safe I'm sorry, any safe vessel. And then you still need your life vest and other safety gear, but that's correct. I know um, oftentimes I'll come up here on, on the weekend and you see loads and loads of kayakers. I mean, because it's just a beautiful setting yes. for kayaking yep. and uh, fish off the kayak, I'm sure. And, yes. So it really is neat to see the diversity of the boats that will get out here. During the week, there are typically some, typically in the evenings, but on Saturdays, we'll routinely have 30 or 40 boats out here on the lake. A lot of kayaks, every different color and shape and size of kayak you can imagine. Stand up pa paddle boarding is becoming more and more popular out here. You'll see a lot of people out stand up paddle boarding and when conditions are right, we'll get a number of sailboats out here. We've had sometimes as many as three on the lake at any one time. So it really is neat to see the different uses that are out here. Really neat stuff. Also, I know around the lake, uh, wildlife is so such a key part. It always was uh, for this property. But talk a little bit about there's some wildlife uh, refuge areas around the lake. Yes. So Lake Chilisquaki is, and the preserve as a whole, is really popular with bird watchers here in this part of Pennsylvania. We get a really strong fall and spring wildlife migration that comes through here. We'll have literally hundreds, if not thousands, of snow geese or Canada geese and other different species that are really noteworthy. But on the side of the lake where we're standing right now, the Goose Cove side of the lake, we also have two wildlife observation blinds that are down here. They're constructed by PPL uh, several decades ago. They are tremendously popular, especially with bird watchers. They're in what is designated the wildlife refuge part of the Montour Preserve. And the Goose Cove arm of the lake, a portion of it is a wildlife refuge. So if you can look down, you can see that there are white buoys across there that mark the boundary. And within that wildlife refuge, a part of it is that there's a bald eagle nest on the side of the lake. It's tremendously popular with visitors out here to preserve. But again, as you mentioned, the wildlife observation blinds, there are two of them. I think that they can seat 15 to 20 people relatively easily, real large windows where you can look out and photograph and just observe the waterfowl that's coming through, typically in the fall and in the spring, but any time of the year. That's fantastic, and I'm sure groups take advantage of that. They have to, though, contact Mark yes. to get a permit to go in there. It doesn't cost them anything, is that's that right? That's correct, that's correct. Uh, but they have to contact you so that you know who's in the blind. That's right. And make sure that they're doing things right. Yes. That's, that's really neat. Uh, let's talk about um, one of the big events that I know goes on here is the Chili Challenge. Yes. Tell me a little bit about that. So despite what the name might imply, it's not a chili cook-off. You're not actually cooking and eating chili. Chile is short, of course, for Lake Chilisquaki. So 14 years ago, a group of locals, including Dave Dakota, who was one of the first guys who was with the Monterey Recreation Commission, they worked with PPL to host a special event out here called the Chile Challenge. 
and it's an adventure triathlon style race. It begins with a 19 plus mile bike ride around northern Montour County and a little bit into Columbia County. You come back then to the Montour Preserve, you paddle roughly 2.2 miles around the perimeter of the lake in a kayak or any safe watercraft. You then come back and you run 4.7 miles around the perimeter of the lake on the Chilisaugi Trail, the Ridgefield Point Loop Trail across the top of the dam and then back over to the finish area. So that one's the last Saturday of September each year. We love it. It's 14 years we've been doing it and uh, it's a great way for people to see the preserve at what's arguably the prettiest time of the year. I'm sure it's, I've been, I've been here before and it is absolutely the beautiful, the most beautiful. It would take me 14 days to, <laughs> to complete the Chile Challenge myself, yes. but I've been here and what that does for the region and bringing people in from all over, really. I mean, we have, we have competitors coming in from other states, am I correct in that? Yes, for uh, the Chile Challenge is part of what we call our River Towns Race Series. And the series is promoted in large part by Montour County through the Montour County Commissioner's Tourism Fund. And one of our purposes then is to attract people to Montour County to eat, to work, to play, uh, to stay overnight in the hotels and so on. And for the Chile Challenge and for some of our other races we do, We've had people who have been here uh, who have come specifically from Canada. We've had people who have come from Australia and from other distant countries who have come to Montour County because they were attracted by the races that we were putting on and they've stayed in Montour County. They've eaten in Montour County. They've raced with us. You know, they spent time and money in Montour County and really got our image out there to the world. So we're really proud of the number of people that we bring in on an annual basis again, to eat, stay, and play in Montour County. That's what that tourism, I mean, the, when you say the commissioner's tourism tax, it's it's a head and a bed tax. It's That's correct. Every motel room or hotel room in the county charges a 3% tax to those people who are visiting right. from out of area, and that's used to, in turn, try to draw more people into the region. Right. I think the Rivertown Race Series is a fantastic uh, example of doing just that. Thank you. Uh, also a part of this, and they can learn about those race series by visiting your website yes. when those races are and, and, and learn more about those. And we'll have that website on at the end. Uh, but talk about the uh, pavilions. I know that's part of this is you have to raise the money necessary right. to operate uh, what is really a big business. Uh, it's, it's, it's not easy to raise the, money, the funds necessary to keep this gym going. Right. Pavilion rentals is one of them. Yes. Um, how many pavilions do you have? Seven pavilions around the lake. The fees to rent the pavilions range from $30 for a half day to $100 for the largest pavilion for a full day. Any of the pavilions, if you come out and they're not reserved, they're free to use uh, by anybody who comes. However, you can make a reservation in advance and set aside the pavilion for your use. On, uh, on average, or for this year, let's say, we hope to raise roughly $10,000 in pavilion reservation fees. We then turn around and plow that money right back into the Montour Preserve. We use it to mow the grass, to plow the snow, to take care of and operate the preserve. But we have seven pavilions around the preserve on both the Heron Cove and the Goose Cove sides of the lake, and they're tremendously popular. You know, like we mentioned at the Sugar Shack, all my life I've been visiting the Sugar Shack. If we go back far enough, I've had birthday parties here when I was a kid. When my wife and I were married, we had a reception here at the preserve. We've had my mom and dad's anniversary party. And a lot of families here in and around Montour County have done the same thing. They've either come here for their high school class reunion, for family reunions, for you know any sort of party that you can imagine. And uh, it really works out well for us. There's, there's not a more beautiful setting. No. Let's talk about the lake itself, the history of it. Mm -hmm. uh, from what I understand, PPL takes it doesn't draw the water from here. It actually draws it from the Susquehanna River but they were mandated to have a backup source. Am I right when I say that? Yeah, so they dammed up the branches of the Chilisaugi, I'm sorry, Chilisquaki Creek here with a dam that they constructed in the early 1970s. This is the backup water supply for the Montour plant, which is just essentially just back over our shoulder here. And PPL and now Talon Energy draw water through a pipeline from the West Branch Susquehanna River near Watsontown. They pump that water several miles over here and they pump it into Lake Chilisquaki. And from here, then they draw the water out into the power plant, which they then use to generate the steam, which generates the electricity. So the lake is entirely man-made. It exists solely because the power plant needed the backup supply of water. And when they constructed this lake, it was instantly a magnet for everybody who lived nearby here saying, wow, what an amazing treasure we now have in our backyard. Can't we please play at this place that you've created? And so in part, that generated the interest in the pavilions nearby and the boat launch and the other amenities that we see around here grew out of the fact that you had this 165 acre body of water sitting here. 
So it's tremendously popular for boating, for fishing, and so on. At its deepest point, which is right here against the breast of the dam, it's roughly 40 feet deep. Much of the lake in the sort of Goose Cove and Heron Cove sides are more like 10 to 12 feet deep. Um, but the deepest part that we know of is roughly 40 feet deep. And again, it's, it's a functional body of water. It's used by the power plant, and that's why it exists. But the recreational uses are, are almost limitless. Stanley Frank Musial, affectionately known as Stan the Man, was a Hall of Famer as well as a three-time world champion with the St. Louis Cardinals and a Pennsylvania native. Born January 21, 1920 in Denora, Pennsylvania, a town 20 miles south of Pittsburgh on the Monongahela River, Stan spent his youth playing baseball and was on the Denora High School baseball team. It was in 1938 when the St. Louis Cardinals signed him as a left-handed pitcher. However, when a player shortage in the minors forced him to play outfield, he permanently injured his shoulder while diving for a ball. Taking the advice of his manager, Dickie Kerr, and focusing on hitting, the rest, as they say, is history. Late in the season of 1941, he was called up by the Cardinals from their minor league system and had an impressive batting average of 426 in that short time span. In his first full year with the Cardinals in 1942, they won the World Series and would go on to win a total of three World Series in five years. September 29, 1963 would mark the end of his playing career with the Cardinals, but not before leaving his mark on baseball lore. In the end, he held or shared 29 National League records, nine All-Star Game records, and 17 Major League records. He was inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1969. He had appeared in 24 All-Star Games. Only Hank Aaron had more. Stan the Man Musial passed away at the age of 92, but his baseball legacy will live on in the hearts of St. Louis fans and Pennsylvanians everywhere. What was named as a tribute to one of the all-time greats? A car, a plane, a bridge. On July 12, 2013, the Stan Musial Veterans Memorial Bridge became official. With a total length of 2,803 feet and a width of 102 feet, the bridge crosses over the Mississippi River. Now here we're at the Fossil Pit, and I think another gem within a gem, uh, nationally known. I think one of the great examples when we were walking in the trail from the parking lot we see a car and where's the car from new jersey yeah. people traveling this far because of this gem within our gem yeah. um, talk a little bit about the fossil pit sure so it's an interesting landmark here at the montour preserve my daughter lauren's in pink up on the hillside it's just under one acre of exposed shale and the fossil pit came into existence when ppl was in the process of building the montour preserve and particularly the dam there around lake chosquaki as they took the shale out of here to use elsewhere, they discovered that the hillside was just rich in fossils. And again, as they added uh, interpretive and recreational type amenities here at the site, they designated this as the fossil pit. So for roughly 40 years, generations of kids, including myself, have come out here on field trips from school or, or with their families. And you can come here to the Montour Preserve Fossil Pit and there's no admission. You climb on the hillside, you pick up loose stones, you use your hammer, you dig for them, whatever you keep, you can find. And one of the reasons it's nationally renowned is there aren't that many places where you can go for free and dig yourself and keep whatever it is that you find. And it really is a neat resource. Now, the average kid who comes here wants to find a T-Rex dinosaur or a Stegosaurus or something like that, that's not what you're gonna find. You know, I've got a handful of fossils here that my daughter Lauren has found. You'll find a lot of shells, you'll find a lot of corals. The really neat one you can find here is called a trilobite. And if I remember correctly, it's a Pennsylvania state fossil. And that's sort of the holy grail of things you can find here at the Montour Preserve Fossil Pit. But the average kid leaves here with pockets full of rocks and his shorts are falling down around his knees because he wants to take them all home. Mom and dad make him leave some of them at the parking lot, but it really is a lot of fun. Because well, we just family... saw a gentleman walking out with a bag. Yes, exactly. Full of uh, fossils. Yep. So neat. Yes. Um, just. So, so very neat. And your daughter literally found those in minutes. Yes. 
I'm just walking around picking those things up. Yep. You've got national recognition on the fossil pit. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it's, like I said, a, another part of what makes this whole re preserve uh, special. Yes. Uh, so I would encourage everyone to come out and, and see the entire, there's so much more that we couldn't, we couldn't show it all in one show with the trails. Talk about the trails a little bit. Uh, the, num the length of trails that the system around the preserve is? Right. Roughly 11 miles of trails here at the Montour Preserve. Everything from a nearly five mile loop around the lake, which is the Chilisaugee Trail, to shorter distances, which are a fraction of a mile. Uh, there near the visitor center, we have the Hummingbird Trail. It's a crushed gravel surface trail that's handicapped accessible. It is a relatively short length. If I remember correctly, it's right around a quarter to a half of a mile total loop but it's perfectly flat, crushed gravel. It's easy for anybody to access, whether you're in a wheelchair or pushing a stroller or so on. Again, you can step all the way up to the, the larger trail that goes around the lake. We've got the Bluebird Trail, which goes through sort of a meadow area with all sorts of bluebird nesting boxes. We have a wildlife management trail, a braille trail, which was uh, formed uh, a number of years ago, and it's for the visually impaired. There's you know, signs that are there with braille, it really is a neat interpretive feature out here that's pretty unique, uh, as far as I know, in Montour County and, and in our region. But roughly 11 miles, a lot of the work we do, we do ourselves through the Montour Recreation Commission, but almost an equal amount of work is done by volunteers here at the Montour Preserve, in large part by scout groups, and in particular by Eagle Scouts. We've had several Eagle Scouts, even this summer, who have helped us to rehabilitate some of the trails new mulch on the trails, new gravel, fixing up the signage, and so on, so. You're always looking for volunteers. Oh, I'm sure. Volunteers, absolutely. Because this doesn't come just magically up here. That's right. It takes a lot of work. Yes. And you do have a number of good, great volunteers, but we'd always, you're always looking for more, if yes. I'm correct. And uh, we'll show you, we'll give them information how to get a hold of you by phone or by website a little bit later on. There are some rules at the preserve. Yes. Um, I know on the trails, it's not, you can't have bicycles, but we'll talk on the second because we have those opportunities in Montour County also. Right. But um, the trails, I know there's no bicycles allowed on the trails. Correct. Talk about some of the other rules that people might expect if they come out to the preserve. Sure. So the Montour Preserve, of all the recreational features we have in Montour County, this is by far the busiest. It is the largest site physically, and in terms of usage, last year we had between 75 and 80,000 visitors here to the Montour Preserve. This year, usage is up significantly. We're expecting by the end of the year, we'll be closer probably to 90,000 visitors here this year. And as a result, we do have a number of rules that are in place, most of them from the time when it had been maintained by PPL. They're designed to make it safe and uh, fun for everybody who comes out here. The key ones, like you mentioned, are no bicycles on the trails. You know, we have so many different user groups using these trails. We really can't have fast moving bicycles on a lot of these. There's too many chances for accidents. No dogs or other pets are allowed here to preserve for many of the same reasons. With so many visitors out here, we can't run the risk of you know a dog biting somebody or having an issue. Plus, a large part of this property is a wildlife preserve, and dogs and wildlife in a lot of cases don't mix all that well. Um, and then no alcohol is allowed on the property. Those are the three key ones that uh, come to most people's attentions. But in all cases, it's we have so many people here using it, we want everybody to have a fun, safe experience and the rules are in place to keep everybody safe and, and having a good time when they're here. Sure. Again, we'll go to back to volunteers, but even more so, you know, I know Senator Gordner and myself uh, truly believe in what this property is and how important it is not only to Montour County residents, but all the, the residents in Northumberland, Columbia, uh, Snyder Union counties, uh, it, it is a jewel for all of us and those who haven't gotten out need to come out and see it. I know we've dedicated some funding from DCNR and you were able to do some fundraising efforts, but those those things continue. It's, 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 a, it's a big project, but I think in the state we certainly are committed to seeing the success of this project and uh, we want to thank you for all that you've done to make to keep Montour Preserve going. Let's finish by talking a little bit more about MARC itself. Uh, Mark stands for the Montour Area Recreation Commission. Correct. Um, so it's whole. It's it's. This is a big part of it. Yes. The Montour Preserve is a big part. What else do you have going on? So, our history is interesting. To be honest, the state in the early 2000s said there are so many municipalities, there's so many different groups throughout the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania that are all doing projects, that are all competing for grant dollars and other funding. Can't we please work together? 
to an extent regionally or, or in larger groups and say, how can we pull our efforts? How can we combine our resources so that not everybody needs a shovel and not everybody needs a truck and so on? If we have one group of, in our case, recreation um, employees who can work for multiple entities, might that not be a better idea? And through the early 2000s, culminating in 2005, the Montour Area Recreation Commission came into existence. And it is Montour County, Washingtonville Borough, Riverside Borough, Danville Borough, and the Danville Area School District. We work together to promote outdoor recreation in and among those municipalities and the larger region. And it is our job to do outdoor recreation projects, whether it is park and trail maintenance or special events like the races that we do, we provide outdoor recreation opportunities to our local residents. From 2005 through roughly 2010, really what we did were Rivertown's race series races and we took care of the Hess Recreation Area in Danville. Beautiful park, uh, a little bit more than 100 acres. We have ball fields. We now have a concrete skate park there. We have a network of trails there as well. But that's what we had done up through about 2010. And in 2010, we hit sort of a period of growth that you know was partly planned, but partly some opportunities that came up that we really couldn't pass up on. And we had maintained for PPL a site called the East Branch Recreation Area over in Columbia County. We worked with Montour and Columbia Counties to start building the North Branch Canal Trail along with the Susquehanna Greenway Partnership. So it's a multi-county effort. So far, we've worked on the area between Danville and Catawissa in Montour and Columbia Counties. We also took over Hopewell Park, which is in Mahoning Township, Montour County. It had been underutilized to say the least. We've now, with great volunteer support, constructed more than 11 miles of mountain bike trails on that facility. And this summer, with the support of the Pennsylvania Association of Realtors, we built a bike jumps area and a bike skills area. So we have a pump track for kids on mountain bikes, some bike jumps and others. And that is now Montour County's go-to destination for all things biking related. And then in 2014 and 2015, the Montour Preserve came on our radar. And we said, man, we're really quite busy with what we have going on, but all these other things we've done, as neat as they are, they pale in comparison to the Montour Preserve. It, as you've said the term, essentially it's the gem, it's the jewel in Montour County. And we knew that we can't let the Montour Preserve in good conscience go away, it's too important to us. And so even though we were way over our heads to begin with, we said, no, we will do what we can to keep it open. And yeah, it's a daunting task and a daunting ask, but we need roughly $100,000 per year to operate and maintain the site to the level that we can. And so we surprised ourselves, to be honest. We raised that much money in 2015, and then we've been doing so on an ongoing basis. As of today, we're right around $530,000 that we either have in the bank or that's pledged from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania through DCNR or through other funding partners that we have. So. On October 1st of 2017, that'll be our two-year anniversary. We'll begin our third year of operation here at Montour Preserve. And I honestly don't know where the first two years have gone. It's, it's an awesome place to work. You know, the average person who, who toils away in an office somewhere, I get to be out here at the Montour Preserve. My office is in the visitor center. It, it doesn't feel fair. And I know that that's the case. I can look out and I can see deer. I can see waterfowl and so on. It's not a, it's not a bad job if no. you can get it. No, it's not. So. The Montour Recreation Commission is real pleased to work with you, with Senator Gordon and all the others who are working to make Montour County and this part of Pennsylvania, as we like to say, a better place to live, work, and play. Well, and I think that's that's a big key to it. You know, when, when um, companies are looking to locate, one of the biggest things they look for, besides school and health care, what's available to them, is recreational opportunities for their employees. What a gem we have here. Yes. And it's a great selling point. The Montour County Commissioners, have totally bought into whatever it takes to, to be able to save this gym and keep it going. They, they're, they're smart, they're smart guys, <laughs> and they know we need this here. Um, so thank you so much for thank all you. you do. Thank you for showing us around the preserve. I hope uh, for some people who are watching this that they say, let's get out there and check this out because it is a gem within our region. So thank you so much for having us. Thank you, sir. Until next time, uh, this is Legislative Report. Mm -hmm.